What a glorious day today. Now it is seriously blowing a gale today, but it's about 15 degrees centigrade. The sun is out. It's a beautiful early autumn day. So I thought I would rearrange this woodland area. I've dug out the, um, the fern. I'm going to dig that fern out. I've got hellebores here. I'm going to put foxgloves all around here. I leave that hellebore. There are some lily of the valley at the front here. Whereas, yep, there's some that I dug out. Oh, it's still in a bit. There's some I dug out with the fern. Here we are. So I'm going to replant those. And I think I'm going to put lily of the valley here. Have a nice thick swathe of them. Uh, people say they're quite invasive, but funny enough, they don't grow. Uh, they, they're not invasive in my garden for some reason. But I love these little, uh, these little plants. <clears throat> what else have we got? We've got hellebores at the back there. All these have self-seeded. I haven't planted any of these. We've got the lords and ladies there growing nicely. I got those from a friend years ago. She didn't like them in her garden. So I said, oh, I'll have them. <clears throat> you see them in the countryside a lot. Uh, over here, uh, we've got the epimedium here that I cut right back, just here. And in the log here, oh, a hellebore is self-seeded in the log. I've got some ivy. I actually planted some back there over the logs for the wildlife, perhaps the newts. They hibernate, most of the newts hibernate out of the water. So they come from the pond, come round here, round this area, and they can hibernate here, either in the wall there or the log pile covered in ivy. Fabulous for wildlife. We've got the honesty there, a climbing hydrangea going up the shed. It's never flowered, but I love things climbing up structures. Oh, and the other thing we have at the back here is the Solomon seal. Now, I had, I've actually cut it. There's just a few little bits that I haven't cut back yet. That will look lovely in the spring. There are some primroses over here. Let's just see if I can move the camera around a little bit. So here are the epimedium that I've cut right back. They will send up little uh, flower shoots in the spring, little yellow flowers, and then the new leaves are a lovely light green color. There are some uh, snowdrops here, some uh, primroses. There's some <laughs> grass growing here. <laughs> come on, out you come, grass. This is Mexican fleabane. The ivy leafed toad flax was here. I actually pulled some of it out and it didn't seem to like it and it's disappeared and I hope it comes back. I've decided to take this fern out as well. We've had enough of ferns at the moment. They just sort of dominate a little bit and also the root system seems to be taking up a lot of room. So I'm going to take this fern out now give room for these hellebores and we'll see what else is under here. In fact, look at all these seedlings here. Let's get this fern out of the way. All these hellebores, lovely. I've just got some logs around, around the woodland area. Now, what did I say before? Take the, take the stems off first so that you can see what you're doing and where you're digging. So let's just take these stems off. Yeah, it's nice changing a bed round. It gives you interest for the coming year, especially when you've had a bed exactly the same over the years. Ring the changes. Oh, sorry about that. Have I been stepping on you? <clears throat> yeah, there we are. So you can see what we're doing now. Oof, the, what a root system. Ah. 
I just go all the way round. It's always tricky walking on the bed where there's all sorts of plants growing, but there's no way round it really, is there? They'll enjoy it in the end. <clears throat> Nearly. I'm going to need a bigger spade. <laughs> just difficult to get round this other side. There are some roots just there, I feel. Come on, come on. Oh, gee, not yet. Right, now. Wow. Gosh, look at that, that's the one that's left. Probably goes under the shed and next door. Oh, well there he is. Oh, along with some little hellebores. I might rescue those. There we are. Oh, I like to take off as much soil as possible. There we are. There we are, does anyone want a fern? Good condition, good root ball, grows in the shade, drought tolerant, <laughs> going cheap. Well, that'll make a difference to the, uh, the bed now with those two large ferns. They did sell seeded, I didn't plant them there. There we go. So here's the, um, here's the little hellebore that was growing amongst the roots here. So let's just see what we can save. There we are, that's his roots. That's a nice little root system, isn't it? So that's one hellebore. And there's another one here. Let's see if we can save him. There we are, two. What else is in here? Anything else of interest? Not really. And what I'm going to do with these two hellebores is I'll just, I'll just pop them there, just so the root system doesn't dry out. It's a little empty spot here. And we'll just pop them there while I uh, sort out the rest of the bed and decide where they're going to go. Let's get down to work. Go and get some of those foxgloves from round at the other bed. But just before we do, we can see a very little foxglove here, but just in front of it is one of the biggest weeds in the garden. And this little plant here, oh, there's little foxgloves everywhere. I'm just going to dig him up. This little weed here, it actually fires seeds. So when, you, when it's mature and you touch it, it fires seeds everywhere. So it's really important to, to go around the garden and pick these seeds up. Every one left will be 100 later on in the year. Nice long roots. Ooh, look at these roots. Right over here. Beautiful. So there are lots of weeds around here, so I want to make sure I don't transfer these weeds with the foxgloves. Just get rid of some of these weeds. Ooh, that wind. Wow. Nice warm air though, but it's nice and windy. Ah, oh, lovely autumn day. Warmish, wind, sunshine, gorgeous. Just the day to be out digging foxgloves up. There we are, nice foxglove. Well, we've got five nice big foxgloves and I'll just get two or three more. 
Now this one actually flowered this year, rather small because it was in the shade. They do like some sunshine. Um, so what's going to happen with this one? I'll probably, I'll cut the stalk off and more little foxgloves will grow round it. So I'll still replant this one. And of course there's a new one as well. There we are, we'll take those two together. Clear up some of the leaves of the, the fern. A little primrose there. I'll just dig this bed over a little bit, get some compost, and give these uh, foxgloves a good start in life. I'm just digging out the rest of the roots from the fern. Been there many years, it's quite a brute. I think it's the <laughs> I think it's the roots of the fern. It's probably this tree or something else important. I've just got some leaf mold from the leaf mold bins at the back of the garden, and I'm just going to put some leaf mold on here and also some compost just so that the soil is nice and this is the kind of uh, soil that these woodland plants want and expect rotted leaves but i'll also put some normal standard general compost on as well this is the bread knife old bread knife that's very handy in the garden for cutting all sorts of things, rhizomes, tops of compost, bags. There we are, we'll have the foxgloves right round here and across here. I'll just leave a little gap here for me to walk to the back of the shed. There we are. Right, let's go and get the foxgloves. And here's our first little foxglove. I choose the bigger foxgloves, of course. Uh, so I've chosen about 20, 30 foxgloves and I've left the other uh, 1,948 little foxgloves all over the garden. <laughs> two here together <clears throat> you don't have to be too careful with these fox gloves they're also pretty tough as I say they'll sulk a little bit for a few days and then they'll perk right back up here's a little one you can go in the front
It's a great time to be transplanting plants in the autumn. You can transplant just about anything now. The soil is nice and warm, plenty of moisture and rain to come. I hope you've enjoyed watching me work in the autumn, transplanting these foxgloves. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.